the neighbor on the other side, what is your witness? What, what is your witness? witness? You know, for the past two weeks, the Lord has been giving us words, i.e. a prophetic instruction. Two weeks ago, it was that your light has come. Last week, it was be prepared for the new. And today, it is not a word. It is a question, <laughs> but it is a word. What is your witness? You know, when we're talking about being prepared for the new, there were eight areas we just, we, we, the Lord brought to our attention, which is not exhaustive, but he, he, he mentioned these areas. And I want to remind us, and I would encourage you to go back to your notes or to listen to the message because they're very pertinent to what God is doing. Those eight areas, one was this new phenomena we would begin to see. New ph phenomena, God will be doing things in new ways. And therefore we say we will not rely on the old way of presentation. We also said that the Lord is giving, giving new garments, new clothing, otherwise. We also said that the Lord is releasing new tools with which to manifest who he is. Remember the case of the aprons and the, uh, the handkerchiefs of Paul that were healing the sick. We, we understood that the Lord is creating a new sharpness. He is making us, by the power of his spirit, sharp new sharp, sharp threshing instruments in his hand. We understood that the Lord is giving you insight. He is, he, is, he is giving us the ability to be partakers of his secrets. We understood that the Lord is releasing new sounds of heaven. So we worship him with that new sound. It is not the old sounds. There is a new sound in this season. And we also understood that there are new wine skins. And new bottles he is creating of us, implying that we are in a new dispensation and we are therefore to have a new perception, a new mindset with, with, with which to receive and run with that new outpouring. And finally, he said that there are, that he's releasing a new spirit, isn't it? And a new heart such that as we saw green souls and disciple, hearts of stone are becoming hearts of flesh. And I want you to take this seriously. Because it is the, it is what you receive that enables you, that is, is what you walk with. Is the grace you revere, you respect, you honor, appreciate is the one that, that, you, that you benefit from. You know, as, the, as, the, as that word came last week and the, and the previous week, you join them together and you understand when things are going to happen, you say, yes, Lord, indeed. Indeed, you are. It is, there is, that we are in something new. Assignments are being refined and renewed and being reconfigured because we are in a new dispensation. And therefore, we are not to think about the package of the old. We are not to think about the yesterday package because there is something new. If the packaging is not the way we think or the way we expect or the way we thought. And so today, in the midst of all that that the Lord is saying, he is asking you, what is your witness? Because in this new dispensation, there is a need to be able to convey a message. And you say, I'll, I'll use... Um, the New Americans, sorry, the Amplified Bible, to read what we just read. And this was John, the beloved, was writing here in, in the Gospel of John. And he read, he said in verse 6 of this John chapter 1, There came a man sent from God, whose name was John. There came a man sent from God, whose name was John. The question therefore for you... Can it be announced in the spirit realm concerning you that there came a man, there came a woman sent by God? And we're not talking about the scent of the cold. You know, on Friday we learned about the three, we were talking about spiritual gifts and we, we learned about the three M's. I took my notes and I was able to deduce there were three M's. There were the motivational gifts, the, the ministerial gifts and the... 
manifestation gifts. And so, in terms of Ephesians 4, 7 to 12, we talked about the ministerial, ministerial gifts, where the Lord said, He called some to be prophets, to be teachers, to be evangelists, to be pastors and teachers. We're not talking about that particular sense. We're talking about the sense that we spoke about in the Great Commission. So, on the, well, the leadership conference, we were told that the Great Commission, let's, let's look at it because... We are talking about what is your witness. Mark 16, 15. Mark 16, 15. Can someone read it? And someone can someone also read Matthew 28, 19 to 20? The question you're asking yourself and you're asking your neighbor, what is your witness? But now we want to understand whether we are sent. Whether you are sent. Mark 16, 15. Oh, Mark 16, 15. And then he told them, go into all the world. Go into all the world. And preach the good news to everyone. Thank you. So the Lord Jesus was speaking here and he's telling you and I, go into all the worlds and do what? Preach. And preach. The good news the to good everyone. The good news to everyone. Everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. To everyone, everywhere. So have you been sent is the question. Matthew 28, please, 19 to 20. Go ye, therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them into the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, my sister. So we understood that we have, the, the, we, we, when we're thinking about the Great Commission, we understood at the conference that this is not a uh, suggestion. <coughs> what we just read, read is not God suggesting it to you and I as something that is a nice, may be a nice thing to do. But we understood it was, and is, a mandate. It is a command. And we understood that a mandate is, some, is something you will die for in order to advance it. It's an uncompromising, non-failure tolerated approach to a task. Uncompromising, non-failure tolerated approach. You know, we will not be those. So in this, in this particular mandate we've been given, it's not something you go one day or you attempt one day and you say, nah, it doesn't work, and you lay down. No, no, no. A mandate, otherwise defined by Collins English Dictionary, is an official or authoritative instruction or command. And so this author authoritative instruction or command is coming from our Lord Jesus. And therefore a command is a command. It's not something you are told. It's not, you, it's not something you're told and you go by your feelings. And you say, well, this week I don't think it's a day I can go and tell everyone, everywhere, about the good news. But the Lord is asking us today, what is your witness? What is your witness? Because we saw that it was said of John, in verse 6 of John chapter 1, there came a man sent from God, whose name was John. So, have you been sent? The question then the, that the Lord is asking you, have you been sent? I would think, having heard what we, what we heard and read what we read, that you have not only been sent, but you have been sent with a mandate. That's true. So it is a command. It is an authoritative instruction from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And you do well not to disobey, if indeed you're saying you are his. 
Because we understood that with every instruction, there is a blessing. Sorry, yes, sir, a reward. With every instruction, there is a reward. Remember, Hebrew, is it Hebrews that tells us that those who come to God must first believe that, that so, so it starts with without faith, it is impossible to please him. For, that, for those who come to him must first believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. When we, is, when we obey God's instructions, no matter how, how minute, no matter how crazy it might appear to us, the, 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 there is a reward. I can testify. The rewards of God blow your mind. And then you look back and you can, you can link it to an obedience. And so, the, the question we, we, we said, are you sent? And we have understood that we are sent. God has sent us to be, to, to, to go and tell. And you tell, you see, they tell us that communication is, is I believe it's 80%, if I remember, is 80% nonverbal. So when you're talking to people, many a time, your commu what you're communicating is your, is your lived experience. What you're, what you're communicating is your character. What you're communicating is your deception, it, sorry, is your perception. So, have you been sent? I want you to declare. Because the, the Bible tells us that with our mouth, confession is made unto righteousness. And so, we want to declare. We need to let our ears hear that we are sent. So, I want you to declare to me. But heaven and earth, heaven and earth. Hear, me. hear me, I have come, I, have come. I okay, put your name, I am sent by God, are we talking, Kalechi, open your mouth and talk, hear me, heaven and earth, hear me, I have come, I okay, I am sent by God. So you need to understand that you are sent. And the question the Lord is asking us today, what is your witness? So we go into verse 7, and I want to read from the Amplified Version of this John chapter 1. This man, so we've understood that this, there came a man sent from God whose name was John. And we have understood that there has come a man, there has come a woman, who God has sent, and that is your name. That is who you are. In this verse 7, he says that this man came to witness. And witness in the Greek is, where did I write it? This witness in the Greek is mat marturia, which means evidence given. Whether be it judicial, i.e. in the courts of law, or general, giving of evidence. It also means record, it means report, it means testimony, it means witness. So it therefore says that this John, this man came to witness, he came to testify, he came to give a report, he came to give a record, he came to give evidence of the light that all men might believe in it, adhere to it. Trust it and rely upon it through him. So his testimony, his witness, his um, report, his evidence giving was to indeed ensure that the, that, that the world, isn't it? That he, he might testify of the light that all men, Everyone. all men, might believe in it, adhere to it, trust it, and rely upon it through him. And so, again, the question is therefore to you, what have you come to this world to do? Ask your neighbor. Open your mouth. Ask your neighbor, what have you come to this world to do? 
What have you come to this world to do? You've got to ask yourself, because come tomorrow morning, you put on your 9 to 5 hat, or your, one, your business hat, but in the midst of putting on that hat, you need to still ask yourself, what have you come to this world to do? Because it is an error. If indeed... You, you, you go through life without an understanding of your, your purpose. And as we're transforming, we understand, we understood that the caterpillar, the butterfly starts as a caterpillar and goes through stages to become a butterfly. Implying that this process of metamorphosis that the Lord is taking us on is a continuous one. And so you're waking up in the morning to understand what did you come to this world to do because every day as you obey, as you walk in obedience, you are metamorphing into something else. And may you be found obedient in Jesus' name. Because God doesn't set us up to fail. He has called all of us to succeed. That is why I'm so excited and I so love 1 Corinthians 15, 57. It says, thanks be to God who gives us the victory in Christ Jesus. We always are to win, no matter the task. And if you understand that everything God has put in your hand is, is supposed to win, you will be serious and intentional. Serious and, and not be What's lackadaisical? You know, you know, just you know, it's like you know, the, you know, sluggish, you know, un un uncaring, not driven, you know, not purposeful, you know, just you know, carefree. It's fine to have a carefree disposition. However, be purposeful, be intentional about what God has called you to do. Because the essence of life, you know, I was reading something. I don't know, something popped up, you know, euthanasia. Again, not something we want to go into. But, you know, that is the, the, the willful, the willing, the, 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 uh, 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 a, a, a self-assisted killing, isn't it? Assisting, you want to die, and in certain countries, I believe it was the Netherlands, it's legal under certain criteria to assist people to commit suicide. And we won't go into that, but you see, if you understand your purpose in life, you will know that there's so much to life and the author of life is the one who permits our exit just as he permitted our entry. Oh, Shaham Bakasanda, what is your purpose in life? Because if you know what you have come to do in this world, when little things come by your way, headache, what are all those minor things? You will brush it off and say, I have a purpose. I have come to this world for something. And this world must hear me. This world must see me. This world must know me. This world must experience my touch. Yeah. My existence. And until you're resolute in that intention, your life will be meaningless. And that's where depression sets in. That's where we begin to think we need to exit. Because really, why are you living? Mm. But that is not our portion in Jesus' name. He <laughs> said that John came for a witness. He came for a witness. He came to testify about the light. He came to testify to evidence, to report of the light. And the light in my version is a capital L, implying that the light is a person, it's a noun. What's a noun? A noun, a noun is the name of any person, place, or thing. I'm sure I remember that from when I was taught English. And therefore, the light here, we know that Jesus is the light of the world. And if we go to Matthew chapter 5, I believe, he calls us to be the light. He then told us in Matthew 5, 16, he said, let your light so shine before men, that they see your good works and glorify your Father. So again, your life, as we prayed this morning, we were praying that our lives would be fruitful. You want to be fruitful in your light shining. Amen. Because your light is not just shining for yourself, it is shining that men will see him in you and want him. 
What do people see when they when they look at you? What's the witness? What is your witness? Are you radiating? See me, oh, come and sleep with me. I am the sexiest person on earth. You know, I'm the best thing since like Heaven forbid that that is your witness. Because our witness is the pointing our women to Jesus. Not to ourselves. They should see us and see him. They should see us and want him. He says here, he said here in, in John 1, verse 7, this man came to witness that he might testify of the light, that all men might believe in it, adhere to it, trust it, and rely upon it through him. So he wanted to be the conduit for people to testify, for people to identify, for people to know this light. Let's look at John chapter 1 verse 32 to 34. It's still about what John the Baptist was doing. So you understand. John 1 32 to 34. Then John said, I saw the Holy Spirit descending like a dove from above and resting upon him. I did not know he was the one, but when God sent me to baptize with water, he told me, when you see the Holy Spirit descending and resting upon someone, he is the one you are looking for. Hallelujah. He is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. I saw this happen to Jesus, so I testify that he is the Son of God. Ah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. So he witnessed, he gave testimony that Jesus was the Son of God. What did he come to do? He came to testify of what he had seen and what he had been told. So it therefore implies, what have you seen? And what have you been told? That you need to tell the world around you so that they will adhere to, they will rely upon, they will trust him, they will believe in him. Because you know what? If you don't know it, let me be the first to tell you. The devil doesn't love you. For those of you that have one leg in the kingdom and one leg out, or that don't even have a leg in the kingdom at all. The devil doesn't love you. He doesn't even love your children. He doesn't even love your family. He loves nothing about you. Let me be the first to tell you in case you don't know. And so it is important if I were you to get on the side of the one who loves you. Who will constantly tell? So we heard the case of John. The Lord told him he went about to obey God, but didn't really know the full details. And he said, the one I will tell you will be the, the one that is the one you are. And the one, I, I, the one they were looking for was the Messiah. Yeah. And so he said, the one that I come upon, that the Holy Ghost. He said, let me read my version. And John bore witness, verse 32. Saying, I have beheld the Spirit descending as a dove out of heaven, and he remained upon him. And I did not recognize him. So in the flesh, he didn't know the full details of what he was to be doing. And so I encourage you, yes, there are detailed people. I've worked with detailed people. You know, they'll have their spreadsheets, and they'll be there every nth degree of the assignment. Good that it is, we need this sort of thing. But at the end of the day, there's an element of projection. There's an element of postulation built into certain plans and projects. You estimate. You give a forward view. And so, you, you, we, we see here that he said, I, didn't, I did not recognize him, but he who sent me to baptize in water said to me, he upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining upon, this is the one who baptizes in the Holy Spirit. In essence, remember we said that in this new dispensation, the Lord is revealing his secrets. Mm. And so as you step your foot in the water to begin that walk of obedience, or that walk of being sent, he will unfold the answers. Mm. He will um, unfold the next things you need to know. Mm -hmm. But trust that the law will not allow you to sink. Mm -hmm. He cannot. It's not in his nature. Mm. And if we trust this our God, 
We will not be distracted by the things of the enemy. You won't be distracted by the things that he throws at the flesh because the devil is a liar. Amen. Jesus remains God. We don't waste time on trivialities. We keep on moving forward. Hallelujah. And so, it says that he came to testify. So the question, so, so I, w- I wanted us to, to, to understand. And so, so what, as you go about your day, what is your witness? What is your testimony? As you go about your day, you know the Lord has given me a fresh testimony. Every day you should have a fresh testimony. Because every day you see God in new ways. God is good. He is faithful. When you trust him, you can see his hand. What is your witness? That you would, John, that we saw, he told, his witness was what he had seen and what God had told him. What have you seen in your life? What have you seen in your day-to-day existence? What has he told you? That, 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 that is the witness with which you will testify of him that men will desire him. Because if your eyes are open in the spirit, you know that the devil does not love you. Look at, just look, listen, what's happening out there? Shootings, killings, accidents, all sorts. This is so that the people have express, express journeys to hell. If they don't know Jesus. Destinies are being cut short prematurely. People are having dreams and they're seeing people killing them in their dreams. And they wake up and they start having a sickness and they're having a disease. That is an express journey progressively to hell. Or a slow, a slow, torturous existence. You know, if one doesn't know who they are in Christ. And you're giving it to the agenda of the enemy. John 10.10. Can we read John 10.10? Because I, I, I'm, I'm trying to emphasize... The, the agenda of the enemy that some may forget. And when they forget it, they live life without intention. John 10, 10. The thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose is to give life in all its fullness. Thank you. So, so, Je- so the, Jesus is telling you here that you need to understand the thief's purpose. So there is a thief who, whose agenda is to steal, to kill and destroy. Steal joy, steal peace, destroy lives, destroy relationships. Steal, kill and destroy. Kill, kill, actually kill, kill, kaput. Yeah, dead, dead, dead. You know, on the ground, six feet under. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the agenda. These are all the agendas. You know, Friday night I was called by the police, you know, you know, uh, uh, the, you know that, you know, come and, you know, something has happened. Are you the mother of X, Y, Z? This is a call you never expect in your life. But Jesus is Lord. <laughs> the devil thought we will cry, we'll be crying the cry of mourning. But we're crying the cry of rejoicing. Hallelujah. Crying that God is good. Hallelujah. Crying that our God is faithful. Crying that our God is a covenant keeping God. He is a promise keeper. Yeah. So what is your witness? What is your witness? Isaiah 60 verse 1 to 3, what does it say? We heard this two weeks ago. But you need to understand what it means. What is your witness? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. Verse 3, the Gentiles shall come to your light, and the kings to the brightness of your eyes. Thank you. So we were told, the word to us last two weeks ago was that your light has come. And what does that therefore mean? You've got to be deliberate about arising and shining, because your light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. It's not just light. It is light with his glory. Which therefore implies that you're shining, that you're shining in such a way that there's an anointing upon that shine that attracts. Your light is come for the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. It goes on today. It's not just on you. Nations come to your light and kings the brightness of your righteousness. The light with God's glory attracts. 
It doesn't attract men, men. It attracts royalty. It attracts men of significance. It therefore implies we've got to be ready. We've got to be equipped. We've got to live life intentionally. What is your witness? Because God has put his light upon you for you to have a message. He's put a light on you for you. Whenever they knock you, you've got something to say. Whatever you're doing, there should never be an excuse when God gives you an opportunity for him that you would make an earthly excuse. Oh, I'm sleeping. Oh, I'm eating. Oh, I've got to do this. Oh, I've got to do that. An opportunity missed. God wants you, yes sir. You're driving on the road, you park it and you answer his call. He is saying, arise, shine, for your light is come, for the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. You see, the, you, know, you, you know the enemy. If you understand, you know, we, we learned, when we're learning on, on Friday about the spiritual gifts, the motivational ones, you know, that were articulated in where? Was it in Romans, I believe. Those, those gifts are available to anyone. Anyone can manifest. No. Anyone can manifest those gifts. Giving. You give and you will receive. Many faiths give and you see they're very rich. You will see Christians that are poor, you know that they don't give. They know, they, they know the graces to give into. And, and we understood that these motivational gifts are to motivate, if you're in Christ and you're manifesting these motivational gifts, it is to point people to Jesus. And so, as you walk in these gifts, as you manifest these gifts, this is because the glory, your light has come. So again, how intentional are you living your life? So that you are pointing. When the kings come, when the nations come to your life, and the kings, the brightness of your rising, there is something when they come, they are receiving. Amen. They're receiving the fullness of Jesus that you have to give them. Amen. They're giving you, they, you they're, they're receiving the life that you, you, they're receiving something. One word. All, all you need is one word. And so, you need to understand that your light has come to tell others about the light. To tell others about Jesus. To tell others about this mighty God who is faithful all the time. The, because the, the, when the light and his glory comes, it tells us nations, it attracts. It attracts. It makes Jesus attractive. Well, let's read 1 Peter 2.9. Verse 9, please. Sorry, 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9. And it reads, it says... Loud, loud, son. Loud. And it reads, it says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal <coughs> priest, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Thank you. So the Lord is asking you, what is your witness? You have a witness. To proclaim, to tell the world. And we said that communication is not just verbal, it's also non-verbal. To tell the world, to proclaim the goodness of him who calls you out of darkness into his marvelous life. What has he done in your life that needs to be declared, that needs to be proclaimed, that needs to be testified? You see, you, 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 you need to, we need to understand that in this dispensation, if you look and see, you just need to go out. I was on the train this week. And I was, you know, I got onto this train and I saw this, this woman. And my heart yearned for her. She had tattooed blood drops in her eyes, tattooed dark eyeshadow on her eyes. You know, she was walking with a stick, but she was all in black, and you just knew she was a warlock. And you know, that one was dedicated doing her business for her master. 
and was not ashamed of what she stood for. And so the question is, what is your witness? You've got a light, you've got a glory on you. And how is that radiating for him? So, 1 Peter 2, 9, we saw. He has, cre- he has made you in such a way that we stand out. Every child of the king stands out. But we have a responsibility for the blessings of the Lord to be sustained in our lives. And therefore, the disciplines that we adopt enable us to hold on to what he's given us. But you know, when we don't walk in these disciplines, the things slip out and our life cannot be the full testimony God wants us to be. And that is why we heard on, on Friday, wasn't on Friday, one, I don't know, one of those days that Christians fear witches and what they say because we understand is because they've not paid the price. They don't have the discipline. The, the disciplines in God's presence to, to, to have an altar that is stronger and higher than that of their adversary. And our altar is maintained in prayer, in fasting, in those disciplines he tells us. Because we know the motivational gifts. We now understand that some, whether you sleep, whether you fast, whether you don't pray, whether you're not a Christian, some can um, prophesy, sorry, some can, yeah, can, what, which script was it? Not the ministerial motivational, the other one. Manifestational, yeah? They can manifest these great gifts. But their lives don't have, don't show the essence of who God is if we're not walking in those disciplines and have an altar that is on fire. What is your witness? What do you want your life to look like? For his glory. Because the world is seen. The, 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 the Bible lets us understand that there is a cloud of witnesses. Whether you like it or not, even if no one else is witnessing, if you've got children, your children are your witness. They look at your children, they see you. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse, let's look at, so, so verse 8 of this one, of this John chapter 1, it tells us, he was not the light himself, this is John, but came that he might bear witness regarding the light. So John knew he was not the light, but he came to bear witness of the light. He came. He came to illuminate to illuminate the identity of Christ to the people. God bless him. He came to identify to illuminate to, 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 to make everyone around him know the Messiah. Because then they were waiting for the Messiah. Today there are still people waiting for the, the Messiah. That's true. Our agenda is to highlight. Let the light that we carry point out the fact that that Savior we need is here. His name is Jesus. That healer you need is here. His name is Jesus. That provider you need is here. His name is Jesus. That shepherd you need is here. His name is Jesus. That peace you need is here. His name is Jesus. Everything you need is in him. What is your witness? Or is your life like the, is the life no different from the world? So the needs of those around you can't even be met. You know, we need. John, it tells us that he knew he was not the light himself, but came that he might bear witness. Bear witness, testify, give a testimony, evidence, report, record (coughs) regarding the light. You need to, your life needs to be the testimony of who the light is. 
Therefore, now is the time to radically, boldly have a testimony that is shareable. Because the world around you, if the Lord puts you in a place, there are people around you that your light is radiating to that need to be rescued. Because on that day, the Lord will ask you, what did you do? Because if that one of those around you slips into hell, and if there are adventure you have not mentioned, you have not testified, you have not been a witness, they'll be crying and say, but why didn't you tell me? Mm. That will not be a portion in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to come to a point of being radically bold to, sh to be a witness. Let's read Acts chapter 1 verse 8, which I hope our warriors know by heart. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. What does it say? And you shall be, what does it say? Acts chapter 1 verse 8. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you. What version is that? Sweet, I'll find the version that. New Living Translation. Uh, Acts chapter 1 verse 8 and... Acts chapter 1 verses 8 and it reads, it says, and you sh and it says, but you shall receive power. When and you Lord. shall receive power. Mokoshe. Yes. When the Holy Spirit comes upon yes. you and you shall be witnesses yes. in Jerusalem, in all Judea and in Samaria until all the end of the earth. Yes, thank you. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come for upon you. And you shall be witnesses. You know we need, we are saying that we need, we're in a time where we need radical boldness to witness. Radical boldness to testify. Rad radical boldness to testify, to report, to record to the world around us about this great one. Radical boldness. Therefore, the Bible, Jesus said, the enabling factor is the Holy Spirit. And you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you, the, the power to witness is in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Therefore, we need to desire the Holy Ghost. Let's look at Acts chapter, um, Shoko Sanda. Let's, before we go to that, let's look at Luke chapter 11. The key verse is 13. But for it to make sense, we want to read 9 to 13. Roko Shika Handa, Luke 11, 9 to 13. If I find it, I'll read because we need fast, fast, fast. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Luke, Luke 11. Luke chapter 11, 9 to 13. <coughs> and it reads, it says, So I say to you, ask, and it, sh and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. Hallelujah. If a son asks for bread, and any father among you will give him a stone, or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Verses 12. If he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? Verse 13. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your earthly father give you the Holy Spirit? To give the Holy to those who ask him. Hallelujah. So we see here, essentially, the Lord is saying, if you ask, you will receive. If you seek, you will find. If you knock, the door will be opened unto you. When you ask the Father for the Holy Spirit, he will give it to you. We need the Holy Spirit, the enabler that gives us the power to witness, the boldness to witness, unashamedly, convinced of the victory that is in Christ Jesus. And then I, I, I will read Acts chapter 1, or let's read Acts chapter 4, 29 to 31. Because I want you to ask for the Holy Spirit. The power that enables you to witness. There's nothing like being shy. Shy? Shy? Why? When the devil is not even shy. Ah, uh, he wants to kill you and he takes no, and makes no excuses. He wants to touch all your destiny. He doesn't mess about. And you'll say you're shy. Ah, Lord have mercy. Acts chapter 4, 29 to 31. Oh Lord, help us. Help us. Help us, Lord. Oh, Shahamba, help us, Lord. Help us. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 4. And I read 29. Now, and these are the disciples talking here. 
to show you how intentional they were about their design. It says, and now Lord, take note of their threats. So they were being mocked. You know, some people, it's not us. Some people, they go, they talk to, to people about Jesus, and they insult them. They say some things, they go back and say, no, this is not, this, nah, I'm not cut out for this. You know, how can they insult me? I mean, imagine me. Uh, but you see, they said, and now, Lord, take note of their threats, and grant that thy bond servants may speak your word with all confidence. You see, they still, in spite of it, they were asking, Lord, give us, the confidence with which to speak your word. And we want the confidence to, to testify, to witness about this great God. He's saying that, that we may grant that thy bold servants may speak thy word with all confidence. Will the, while thou dost extend thy hand to heal, and signs and wonders take place through the name of thy holy servant Jesus. Jesus. And watch him. And when they had prayed, the place where they had gathered together was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak the word of God with boldness. Let's rise. You know, the Lord wants you to have a witness. The Lord wants you to be confident and bold about this our God. He wants you to know that your God is healer. Your God, he wants you to let the world know that this your God is healer. He is deliverer. He is provider. He is peace. A lot of people out there lack peace. They can't go home and have peace. They need Jesus. And you need to be the witness that brings Jesus to him. I want us to pray. We first, we want to ask the Holy Spirit. Ask the Father to fill you with his Spirit. The Spirit that gives you the boldness to witness. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says, And you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Ask the Holy Spirit. But ask the Father to give you the Holy Spirit. Such that you can boldly witness. Father, we ask for the Holy Spirit that we will boldly, boldly witness. Witness with confidence. Witness about you. Testify about you. Tell the world around us about you. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. Ask Him. But he said, if, he, he said that how, if you ask them, that if, you, if a child, if your child asks you for feet, fish, fish, you won't give them a snake. If they ask you for an egg, you won't give them a stone. So also will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask. Ask the Lord to give you the Holy Spirit so that you will boldly witness. You will witness with confidence. Ask the Lord for that radical boldness and confidence with which to witness. Radical boldness and confidence to snatch men and women out of the kingdom of darkness into his marvelous life. Begin to ask the Lord for the Holy Spirit, sweet Holy Spirit. Shahab of Asanda, fill us with that power, with the boldness, the confidence, with which to enter our world. We thank you that you said that we should arise, shine, for our light is come, for your glory is risen upon us. You have said that darkness, in spite of the fact that darkness has covered the earth, your glory has risen upon us, and your light is seen upon us, such that nations come to our light, and kings to our brightness. For the brightness of our rising, Jesus be glorified. Amen. Jesus be glorified. <coughs> Ask the Lord Jesus. Excuse me. Ask the Lord Jesus to be glorified. We saw, we saw that as they prayed for boldness, as they prayed for boldness, the Holy Spirit visited. The Holy Spirit touched their lives, such that they were healing, such that they were delivered. Begin to ask the Lord that as now ask the Lord that the Holy Spirit will manifest through your life with signs and wonders, with healings, such that when you carry your witness, when you carry your testimony to your world, there will be evidence that you have brought Jesus on the scene. Lord, we ask that you, Jesus, will be tangible, tangible, tangible through our lives, tangible through our lives, to your glory. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we honor you in Jesus' name. For those of you who don't know Jesus, I invite you to make Jesus Lord of your life. I invite you to have the privilege of being able to witness. To witness, to testify, to tell the world about the goodness of our God. 
about the goodness of He who's called you, who will, when you know Him, call you out of what you were into what you will be. He's in the business of making the old new. And so I invite you to make him Lord of your life. Say out to me, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of my sins. I ask that the blood that you shed on the cross washes away my sins. I believe that you died and that you rose after three days. Because you rose, I know that I too will rise. I will live with you in eternity and I will enjoy you this side on earth. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and give me the power to live for you. I renounce Satan and all his works. Thank you for saving me. If you pray that prayer, you're now born again. Welcome to the family of God. The Bible says there's rejoicing.